Namaste and greetings. I, Anshul Karnani, researcher at IMPRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, Prabha, Evam Niti Anusandhan Sanstan, Nay Delhi, extend my warmest welcome to you all to IMPRI Web Policy Talk. Today, we are gathered for an in memoriam condolence meeting remembering Ila Bhatt, 1933 to 2022 a pioneer in amplifying the voices of women engaged in self-employment and the unorganized sector. Ila Ramesh Bhatt was an Indian cooperative organizer, activist and Gandhian who founded the Self-Employed Women's Association of India, Seva, in 1972 and served as its general secretary from 1972 to 1996. She was the Chancellor of the Gujarat Vidya P from 7th March 2015 to 19th October 2022. A lawyer by training, Bhatt was a part of the international labor, cooperative, women and microfinance movement and won several national and international awards including the Raman Magsessa Award 1977, Right Livelihood Award 1984, for helping home-based producers to organize for their welfare and self-respect and the Padma Bhushan 1986. We pay our deepest condolences to the enlightened soul. This session is organized by IMPRI, Gender Impact Studies Center, GISC, under its series, The State of Gender Equality, Gender Gaps. The session will be chaired by Professor Vibhuti Patel, visiting distinguished professor at IMPRI and eminent economist and feminist scholar. With the permission of the chair, Professor Vibhuti Patel, I would like to introduce the gathering. Please introduce the gathering. Thank I you, ma'am. Answer. The esteemed panelists for the sessions are Dr. Hasina Kharbi, founder, Impulse NGO Network and president, WPC, Ms. Nisreen Ibrahim, CEO, Rangunwala Foundation, India Trust, Mr. Martin Mappan, Founder Member, Nav Surgeon Trust, Ahmedabad, Professor Ghansham Shah, Renowned Pro Political Scientist, Dr. Rama Ramaswamy, Associate Professor at Mizoram University, Ms. Parul Sheikh, Co-Founder and Executive Director, Sheshav, Dr. Roshan Ara, University of Kashmir, Mr. Sandeep Chachra, Executive Director, Action Aid Association India. Dr. Sanjay Kumar, President, Corporate Affairs and Public Policy, Akras. Ms. Amarjeet Kaur, General Secretary, All India Trust, Union, Congress. Now, I would like to invite Professor Vibhuti Patel to initiate the session with her opening remarks and proceed further. We look forward to learning from the esteemed gathering. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Achil. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Arjun Kumar, Dr. Simi Mehta, and IMPRI team for putting together this very important and memorable event, Remembering Elabat, a pioneer in amplifying voices of women engaged in self-employment and unorganized sector. I also greet Dr. Sanjay Kumar, uh, Ms. Amarjit Kaur, uh, Sandeep Chacha, Professor Kansham Shah, Dr. Hasina Karbi, uh, Ms. Nasreen Ibrahim, Mr. Martin McWan, Dr. Rama Ramaswamy, and Parul Shet and Dr. Roshanara, all of whom have worked or got inspired or were in touch with Ilaben uh, very closely. Uh, dear friends and the esteemed participants, I see so many known uh, faces in the women's movement and the working class movement as participants. Uh, I greet you. Uh, all panelists have many, many stories and vignettes to share in this memorial meeting for Ilaben. But I too have, as I first met Ilaben in the early 70s, immediately after the 1969 Gujarat riots, which was a watershed in my life, and it was a life changing experience for me. Uh, and it resulted in a lifelong friendship and camaraderie with Ilaben. But first of all, I would like to share first hand experience narrated by. Nita Ben Hardikar of Anandi in Ahmedabad, Anandi, Gujarat, uh, where, uh, on 3rd November 2022, immediately after cremation of Ila Ben. And I quote Nita Ben uh, Today morning at 5 Panchil Society, 
the entire space was peaceful but emotional. Seva Sangathan women pay tribute through prayers and songs and Ame Par Karishu, Gujarati version of Hum Honge Kamya, We Shall Overcome. Uh, and the Shanti Kamar, the another prayer, upholding the values of peace and non-violence and Sarva Dharma Prathana and some verses of Quran -e Sharif, complete silence and then singing together. It became very emotional. All my memories of her, uh, her work and working with her started flooding. Such a peaceful face and frail body clad in flag of India, uh, tricolor, lit up the whole space. We all prayed for peace and power to the gentle and powerful soul who has been firm leader and guide to many, many uh, souls uh, pass on in peace, uh, quote completed. Indian women's rights movement has lost a visionary and powerful leader of poor and marginalized women workers and self-employed women facing intersectional vulnerabilities in the labor market, factor market, and product markets in the informal sector. Her passing has created an immeasurable void in the democratic spaces that strives for dignity of individual and social cohesion. Ilaben always stood by the underserved sections of society in the urban, rural, and tribal areas. Ilaben supported the survivors of 1969 communal riots and 1980 anti-reservation riots in which the Dalit families were attacked. I, as a student of MS University and a member of Study and Struggle Alliance in Vadodara, got in touch with Ilaben during early 70s when textile mills were closing their doors for workers. Uh, women workers and massive retrenchment was going on as a result of rationalization, mechanization, and automation in the textile industry. Uh, we were working with the textile workers in Barodra while Ilaben was working in, in with textile labor union as a young lawyer uh, in, in Ahmedabad. The TLA, as we know, was founded by Gandhiji. Its constitution was written by Mahatma Gandhi and Ansuya Sarabhai was a mentor of Ilaben. Ilaben was a uh, committed secular humanist who stood by Dalits, Adivasis, and religious minorities. Uh, the way, uh, there are so many stories about how the Self-Employed Women's Association was formed with a democratic discussion and participatory approach and bottom-up bottom approach adopted by Ilaben. And uh, she was a friend of women's rights movement and women's studies movement right from 1981 when her house was attacked by uh, because of a stand on reservation by the rioters and the women's rights movement, robust women's rights movement, I would say it was immediately after anti-rape movement. And uh, nascent women's studies movement stood by Niraben, uh, stood by Ilaben, and we also invited her to address first plenary uh, of the Indian uh, Women's Studies uh, Association conference, which was organized by SNDT Women's University. After that, till now, Ila Ben and several office bearers of SEVA have been members of Indian Association for Women's Studies. Uh, Shram Shakti report was another landmark in Ila Ben's career, where women's movement and women's studies scholars, policymakers, and uh, grassroots uh, organizations, they worked in cohesion voluntarily with tremendous commitment uh, so that we could have this mammoth report, which is, I think, unique in the history of Indian working class movement. She was responsible for the labor reforms, for labor standards, social security, social protection of the workers. And it was in under her leadership that SEVA played pivotal role in unorganized sector social security act 2008 national rural livelihood mission 2011 and street vendors act 2014 and ILO also second labor commissioner's report in which uh, rest of the reports were only talking about neoliberalism but two chapters which stood out one on women, informal sector and one on child labor i think where seva had played a very very important role uh, she Ilaben also made contribution to the elders which was formed by Dr. Nelson Mandela, and she took up a, a girl, not bride, a campaign against the child uh, child marriages in Asia, Asian and African countries. So her persona was uh, extremely, uh, was de defined by the Gandhian philosophy. And today, 
we have panelists who have worked closely with Nira ben, uh, with Ila Ben, or they were inspired by Ila Ben, and they also continue her legacy uh, in various parts of India. So first of all, I would like to request Dr. Sanjay Kumar, President of Corporate Affairs and Public Policy Upgrade, to make uh, to share his memoir with uh, Ila Ben. Over to Dr. Sanjay Kumar. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Patel, Professor Patel. So, you know, since we have so many panelists to share their experiences and about Eleven, so I would uh, like to just stick to my own experiences working with her directly, indirectly uh, within Seva. So, I, I had, I remember that I had joined uh, Seva in uh, 1999 when I was a student at JNU. I was doing my MPhil. And uh, I, I joined Seva for a few months in Delhi to organize some street vendors and to organize self-help groups. And I remember that we had invited Ila Ben to address the, the women, uh, potential women Seva members in Delhi. And uh, there was no Seva in Delhi at that point of time. And uh, I, I, I do remember that uh, the way she spoke and the way she interacted uh, with uh, women and us, like uh, it was one of the factors that I, she was one of the factors I would say that uh, one of the reasons why I decided to continue with Seva and I worked with Seva for 17 years. So I, I went there for seven months and I ended up working there for 17 years and it was, it was her charm, it was her, you know, like uh, the, whatever you call it, but it was her aura and and also the vision uh, for building up Seva and Seva movement that, that attracted me a lot. So she was very simple and she was a true living Gandhian, I would say. And uh, yeah, and she always, uh, one thing which uh, we found very, uh, like uh, very uh, clear in her thoughts, in her writings, in her, in her speeches, like uh, in her interactions, that she always did put uh, women at the center and uh, women workers in the center. And that was something that was, I think, one of the reasons why women, issues of women workers in the informal economy got so much highlighted. So it was, it was her uh, contribution that she started building that up the visibility, the visibility factor, you know, that women are invisible in the workforce. And I remember I, I got inspired so much about regarding the visibility that I, when I was uh, writing my uh, MPhil dissertation, I asked my supervisor that I was with the South Asia Studies Department and, and I asked my supervisor that I, I want to write a dissertation on women's development in Bangladesh. And he looked at me and laughed at me saying that, uh, why do you want to write a dissertation on women? Because, you know, generally women uh, write or, or, you know, these are the topics which usually the women researchers take up. And I said that that was the main reason because by then I had joined Seva and, you know, uh, that, that was my influence from Seva that, you know, uh, we all wanted to, a highlight or or make the women's contribution visible and later on you know i uh, taking the visibility as a subject i also took up uh, one photography project and uh, did a series of photography exhibitions i i did capture myself the photographs and when eleven visited those exhibitions two exhibitions he visited one in ahmedabad one in delhi and uh, the comment she you know, she was very, very fine with her words. She also wrote forward for my book, the photo book, Hands of Hope. And the comment she wrote was like, uh, uh, Bhai Sanjay, we all, Seva we all Seva sisters are proud of you. You know, so she was, she was so uh, like, you know, she was so down to earth with her words also, not only her leaving, but also with her words that I, I was always very much, fascinated so and we all know her contribution we don't, i don't need to go into uh, go deep into that but once she one thing uh, which i found very very distinct from other ngo leaders or or uh, 
civil society leaders that during her lifetime in the very beginning itself, she identified few uh, successors and she handed over her you know, positions to all those women. That was very, very credible because not many people in our country do so. And that was something, you know, that is why Seva movement continued thereafter when, when, even in, when she was not very active. So she was, she was very visionary. She was like, she was truly uh, like passionate about the subject, about the, about the, uh, the well-being of uh, women workers in the informal economy. She was, she was not about herself. She was about the cause. She was about, she was all about uh, women. And I never saw her seeking any media attention, you know, but she was widely covered all over the world. So these were some of her traits. And one thing I, I always remember, and that gives me a lot of confidence when we were organizing one event, like uh, we wanted to ask uh, Nitish Kumar in Bihar for a, for a commission to understand the status of women workers in informal economy in Bihar. And uh, Eleven was also there, and we had invited Nitish Kumar, and his P and he had agreed. His PA was not picking up the phone in the morning, and she came to my room and uh, asked me, and she saw me a little uh, like, tensed. She asked me, Sanjay, bhai, what is the what is the reason why you are so tensed? And I said to her that you know Eleven, it looks like that uh, Nitish Kumar will not come, so because his PA is not picking up the phone. And she was very calm and very coolly she said that, don't worry, if he comes, it's fine. If he does not come, it will be his loss. You know, Nitish Kumar not only, not only came, but he stayed there for one and a half hours. It was a very busy day for him. It was 8th March and uh, he stayed there for one and a half hour. And he was so happy to see Ilaben in Bihar. So he, he accepted everything what we wanted, you know, so that was her charisma, that was her charm. So I'll stop here and, uh, you know, uh, uh, by saying that she inspired millions of women and organizers all over the world. And we will truly miss her uh, very fondly, but it will be very, you know, like the real tribute would be to continue with her work, with her, with her vision, with her, with her, uh, whatever she wanted to do. Uh, you know, uh, for the rights of women workers in the country and all over the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay Kumar, for giving us a very important dimension of Eleven's personality. Nothing without women, nothing about women without women. So that was the approach she always followed and how she mentored the younger generation so that the uh, organization flourished even after she became very old and was unable to or do so much of running around as she did earlier and her visionary person and her charisma that you are talked about is very very all of us uh, uh, share the same feelings now i request comrade amarjit kaur who has been a veteran trade unionist who has an extremely uh, uh, commit commitment and the militant uh, career so far as the workers rights are concerned to share her experiences of working with her co-traveler uh, thanks, uh, Professor Rubitui, uh, that uh, you called me for this particular seminar and the organizers. Uh, I thank them also. You see, when we uh, look at Ella Ben and her contributions and her interactions with different people, including interactions with me, a uh, little bit how she became Ella Ben. When she was born, India was uh, thick into the freedom movement. And uh, already martyrs, uh, Bhagat Singh Sukhdev and Raj Guru had already inspired with their martyrdom. Uh, we had also heard about Chittagong Armory case. She was a child at that time. Uh, that was the time uh, Bismil and Ashfakula had also been hanged and several other youngsters. So she was growing uh, as a teen uh, when the freedom movement was really picking up very fast. And uh, people in India knew that India will be free very soon. That whole environment around her must have been a very, very great element in making a uh, That's first thing I want to say. And post-independent India, 
that generation which uh, learned from the freedom movement and was inspired from the freedom movement definitely played very very positive uh, constructive role in the building of the nation and in that process ella ben chose the most vulnerable uh, women sections uh, in the labor movement uh, to pick up with uh, to look at their lives and to do whatever she could do and uh, i was a student in delhi university when the committee women's committee on status of women that committee was functioning all over india and ella ben along with veena mazumdar and uh, kumud ji and vidya bensha uh, she was actively moving around uh, myself having been active from my student movement days uh, school days itself in the university i was already a student activist and uh, taking keen interest uh, into the women's movement and the trade union movement even participating into various movements which were happening so being aware of what is happening all around and being participant as a woman uh, activist also as a student activist also i was heading a student organization in delhi all india student federation at that time during that period when she was working in that committee so we students were looking forward to what will be the outcome of that committee and uh, we got a chance also to get interacted with her uh, on how we at the students level find uh, discrimination going on in the colleges and in the universities and all so uh, that is that was my first introduction and then later on several times i could uh, uh, be with her in various uh, joint movements when we were talking about commission for women to be set up at the national level state level commissions be set up all laws should get through the women commissions there were various stages and in all those stages uh ila ben was always active and we could see the next generation of her uh, getting guidance from her and uh, the result was that uh, when in a, at international level uh, there was talk of uh, home based workers looking at their life that was the time a very important role was played uh, by seva along with other central trade unions i remember i was national secretary of aiuc and uh, our general secretary at that time was uh, mahendra ji and uh, kl mahendra ji and ella ben approached uh, him and said that Uh, we all have to work together and see to it that indian government takes a stand in favor of our home based women workers uh, and uh, there was a change of the government in 96 and it so happened that we could go to minister uh, aituc along with the seva uh, friends uh, we could go to the minister who was uh, immediately appointed and he was to lead the delegation to ilo and before that several of the activities were done by Uh, various trade unions and uh, in some cases the seva taking the lead in guidance uh, from lrg and ultimately that convention on home based could be adopted in uh, ilo and uh, that was a dream that that convention must be ratified in india uh, when i am paying my tributes to her i definitely wish that the trade union movement uh, must pick up the issue uh, if we want to get justice to those who are peace rate workers and home based workers this will be the uh, real tribute to her uh, her uh, contribution uh, was great in the sense that uh, when the committee on uh, status of women came out with the report everybody was keenly looking at what will happen the women's movement as well as the trade union movement because that uh, triggered several of the steps to be taken after that committee report came it uh, uh, naturally the discussion began around women studies centers should be set up in the campuses that was the study about then the trade unions uh, were fighting for equal remuneration act that also picked up for the 1975 had been declared as the international year of uh, women so we as uh, student leaders were uh, uh, very much uh, impressed with that and we were keen what will happen and all we wanted to do all that so uh, i must say that her work and her keen interest ultimately her colleagues 
succeeded in setting up sub women studies center like veena majumdar took initiative in setting up uh, cwds and later on kumud ji also worked and ela ji always supported such efforts then several of the universities later on developed women studies centers so this was uh, some courses were introduced uh, some uh, uh, task was given to the universities about gender study studies so it was a triggering effect of that kind of a report very well written report and uh, so much hard work was done by traveling all over india and uh, ila ji was uh, really a person who will go deep to the masses it influenced her also in a big way uh, and it influenced the women's movement and the trade union movement the work which they did it so in 80s we find all these uh, movement for women commissions and the center state level uh, justice to women at all level all that had begun 80s onwards and then we find uh, in 96 this um, convention on home based worker and then later on the movement picking up uh, for justice to these women uh, as because uh, we all are to speak uh, in a limited time because of uh, uh, so many speakers to pay homage to her i must say my uh, experience uh, in having interaction with her meeting with her talking to her discussing various issues and the problems and the agitations to be taken up when i went to gujarat uh, as a women leader because uh, uh, i had did national federation of indian women in delhi for 7 years then i was also national secretary of nfiw national federation of indian women uh, then i was also its national general secretary so in that capacity i met uh, ella ji whenever i visited gujarat or whenever she was in delhi and i had a uh, lot many opportunities to meet her as a trade union leader i was working before 94 at delhi level but uh, in 94 i became national secretary of at uc so that was the time i could travel all over india on uh, women's issues and all and that's how my interaction with her and participation in all those events which were organized to um, Uh, mobilize uh, uh, and to do advocacy with indian government with the bureaucracy with the trade unions with the social groups for this home based workers convention so she was uh, uh, i will never see her tense uh, she was she was always having a um, smile now if you look at uh, her face which you are using as a backdrop for this seminar there is a uh, very um, lucid smile on her face so uh, uh, that's true what sanjay was saying that uh, she will take the things very coolly uh, but she will give a thinking and uh, she will be firm on her opinion and she knows that she is on the right path and she knew that the others will have to understand she knew that if not today tomorrow they will understand that was the kind of personality ella ji was i really feel uh, uh, very uh, uh, enamored that i could uh, get opportunity uh, to be close to her uh, for the movements and agitations for discussions in seminars in workshops in public meetings in those gatherings uh, those are very good memories for me inspiring memories for me and uh, i really um, thank the organizers uh, that they remembered me that i should come and uh, uh, speak some remembrances about ella ji so my deep tributes to her and uh, i know that those who are working in seva today though who, those who carried the legacy further uh, they will try to emulate uh, continuously what uh, ella ji was her personality was and the confidence she had and uh, the the belief she had uh in uh, whatever she was doing uh, so the present leadership will definitely carry it forward and it will be not only gain for the women's movement and our informal economy vulnerable women but it will be a gain for the trade union movement in general and the women's movement in general thank you very much my uh, thank you amarjit ji for much. providing such an important political backdrop right from the colonial times pre independence period to till the, the present uh in which ilabain's work and life was situated and also 
such an erudite presentation with some factual data about the whole trajectory of the women's movement and Ila Ben's contribution to that. And now I turn to Professor Gansham Shah, who is a political scientist, and he has also known Ila Ben for a long time, and he also was a like regular visitor of uh, Gujarat Vidya Peet when Ila Ben was a chancellor of the institution. Over to Professor Gansham Shah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Impri, for inviting me to pay my tribute to Ilaben. Nanshambai, uh, please adjust your screen. We are not able to see. It's okay? Uh, yeah, now it's okay. Okay. Uh, my relationship with her goes back to more than four decades, uh, late 70s. Uh, I used to know Ramesh Bai, who was professor of economics and engaged in survey. And Ilaben, since he started Seva, and by that time I shifted from Delhi to Surat. Uh, and there are several personal occasions of exchange of uh, several things. Uh, and I'm always impressed by her simplicity and personal care. There are several occasions where we travel together from Delhi uh, for some work to Amidava, particularly last two decades. Uh, she saw that uh, her vehicle, and that was the auto rickshaw, see that that leads to my place and distance from her place and my place was about four to five kilometers. Uh, at least two, three times she came to my place and I visited her and we have an exchange of things. Uh, and all of you have a personal good remembrance for her work. So I don't uh, like to repeat that, but I would like to make one or two things first, her departure, I feel a, a loss of a last Maoist Gandhian engaged continuously for social transformation in general and women empowerment in particular. And women empowerment was just not a word for her. She believed a full time with social security employment and autonomy of a woman from the social constraints. So she was aware of the social constraints and she wanted women of all state, but particularly the working class women to have a freedom to take their decisions and also face the odds of the market. And that is a great loss. In the last two decades, what I've witnessed and she shared with me, her moral dilemmas uh, and the institutional country constraints. Uh, sometimes she wanted and she was really agitated and agitated herself feeling suffocating kind of environment that had developed in the country. Her helplessness, but at the same time, her cause and her hope for women's empowerment uh, continue and she continuously, despite all her uh, agony and helplessness. She continuously till the last, I know last last year I brief her, uh, meet her very briefly. Her continuously, she was concerned about how women of informal sector get empowerment, 
and she was aware of the constraints of a larger economy. See, a couple of times, uh, particularly in the last two decades, told me that what we will do it, this is often outdone by the larger neoliberal economy. But she has never lost the hope. And continuously, and she encouraged women against all odds uh, of the present crisis. And I think that is a great message that all of us should carry further. That against all odds, uh, we continue. Uh, when I remember, and when all you remember, we remember 11 of 1970s when she launched or participated, and she was the leader of a struggle in Ahmedabad, in Manekcho of vendor workers. Uh, in 76 or 77, I don't remember the name, uh, year, uh, Justice Bhagwati took her personal letter as a PLI uh, for getting uh, for rights of the vendor to get a space, what she called is a space for a two basket uh, to have the right to do that business. And that struggle continued uh, all along her life. Uh, in mid 90s, uh, uh, she inspired to form all India organizations of the vendors uh, build the pressures on the government, and, and at last, after struggle for more than two decades, in 2014, uh, we got an act uh, for the vendors in the country. But thereafter, she was not very happy with the way in which uh, the act was almost non-implemented. And we all know that after the uh, 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 COVID Pradhan Mantri scheme, and we have the report that when the scheme is not, when the committees have not been formed in more than three fourths of the towns, so it's almost, uh, it has remained on paper. And she was really upset about these things and asking several times the questions to me and several others, then what is the sense of doing this kind of act if they are not implemented? And I feel that this Institute of Impact and Policy should take this task and see that this act at least we should build a pressure on the government and in civil society through studies and through advocacy to see that this act, at least this act is already passed and get implemented in most of the cities and women, women vendor workers get at least a small space to do their business. Because we all know that in the last three decades, the condition of informal workers is getting worse and worse. They are more vulnerable. And in this situation, our best tribute to 11 is that we re-energize ourselves, put all our efforts uh, to see that, at least not completely, but at least part of this her effort get fulfilled in reality. And that would be a best tribute to her. Thank you. Thank you, Ganshambai, for highlighting the importance of research and advocacy and also uh, sharing the method of functioning of Ila Ben and her empathy and simplicity, and also why we need to, the, the need to re-energize ourselves in our endeavor. And now I would like to ask Ms. Nasreen Abraham, who was mentored by Ilaben, uh, to share her experiences. And she's also continuing in action her the same kind of work through, and I've attended several of her functions and several of the programs uh, in the same line as 
Ilabend had and Vishnu. Uh, over to Nasreen Bhai. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Vibhuti and Imti, for having me here. It's uh, uh, it's a little bit emotional also because the start of my journey in the sector I owe to Seva. Uh, I my first association with Seva was through my summer internship as a management uh, student, and uh, uh, due to the communal uh, disturbances in the mid 80s in Ahmedabad at that time, my 10 week uh, summer internship ran into I think more than four months. And so, so did my bonds with the Seva sisters and uh, the work that I got the opportunity uh, to see and experience firsthand. I went back to university, finished my management degree when I, when I was with Seva, I, I was told that you can come back once you finish your uh, education. And that time, like, you know, it, it seemed quite far-fetched because maybe as a young management student, you have uh, different uh, dreams. And this I'm talking about the 80s when uh, crossovers were sort of virtually unheard of. Uh, so uh, now our sector has become, I think, more corporatized and... Uh, uh, I don't know what we say by way of professionalism. Uh, so, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but uh, the mid eighties were very different. I went to the corporate sector, but I could stick it out only for a few months because there I felt I was a small cog in a very big machine, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing what my efforts were contributing to. And uh, I said, I want, can I come back? So there I was back, back in Seva, in 19, 1980, I think early 1987. And uh, uh, so Anila Ben had that time told me, I remember very clearly uh, to this day, it's still that scene is fresh in my mind. Said, so, so you think you are a management graduate? So here is a list of cooperatives, make them viable. So, and in that list of cooperatives, there were service cooperatives, there were artisan producer cooperatives, they, it was a whole range. You know, they were like kerosene vendors, vegetable vendors, uh, Safai uh, 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 cleaning service providers, block printers, patch workers, you name it and it was their fish, uh, fish vendors. And, uh, and that's how I started. And uh, believe you me, I think the learning that has, it has been is like Vipudi ji, I think rightly said, uh, contributes to my work even today, three decades later. What do I say for Ilabin? I think she was a visionary uh, in a true sense, because the very fact, you know, now we invest a lot of energy as organized NGO leaders in the regulatory framework, in, in how do we strategize our work, how we position our work. But I think she did it so many decades back. Seva was registered as a trade union, organizing the unorganized. I think what would be more empowering for women than to give a framework, an institutional framework for organizing the unorganized. And like, you know, it was a mantra for us at Seva, struggle and development. So unionization was a process of the struggle and cooperativization was the, uh, was, uh, was the tool that we had to focus on development and economic empowerment of the women that Seva could organize together as different trade groups. So that itself, I think has given a lot of learning. When we talk of model creations, I think we, we have those multiple models that Seva has given to the sector, not only to the women's movement, but I would say to the sector in terms of structuring of institutions, in terms of strategies that one can adopt. I think there is a lot of learning in, in whichever way you want to see it, what this visionary and this leader has given us. So if there were, if there were women and, they it, and it was at that time found too difficult to mainstream them into the banking system, what solution did Ila Ben have? Seva Bank. The bank cannot, the bank cannot find systems to absorb you or to bank you. Where will you take your money? 
and I remember what we were told. I think some of it was stories and some I was I experienced myself I, during my time with Seva is that these women took, you know, their money, like these small vendors, self-employed women, uh, daily wage earners. They went to the bank and they showed their small notes. And when there was no this thing, and then they said, okay, we'll have our own bank. And that, that's how Seva Bank began. So, so I think we have so many, so many learnings, so many models. And uh, I think the most important learning is the power of collective. So the power of collective and one has seen the change that it brings. Because like, you know, if you have organized uh, Safai Kamgars, so what do you do? Like, you know, uh, uh, as domestic workers, what voice will they have? But then you are cooperativized, they're taking contracts with cooperatives. They're taking contracts with uh, uh, academic institutions. I remember when, when I was working with uh, Sondaria, the uh, Safai Kamgar's uh, cooperative, I think it was a high for us that we, we took a contract for IIM Ahmedabad, where at one location, we could, uh, we could place more than 100 women every day. So, you know, this is, this is, I feel that the power of, what the power of organizing can do, what the power of the collective can do. If you, if you say, if you look at the rag pickers, okay, so picking up rags, uh, breaking your back the whole day, or you have a GR in place where the textile mills give you the right to pick up their chindis, what, what economies of scale that does that achieve? So it is not only about organizing. I think there was a very subtle, very gentle, but like speakers before me have sent, very firm and a very sure strategist that Ila Ben was that if you have to organize so many to sustain it, you have to have economic development. And I think that is a lesson that has remained with me that when you talk of uh, when you talk of women's empowerment, the underlying thread always has to be economic empowerment. And the game changer that it becomes is, is I think I have, I have experienced it in my time with Seva and I have experienced it in, in, uh, in, uh, in my work uh, in more than three decades in the, in the sector. Ila Ben, as a, as a visionary, I think I've spoken about unionization and cooperativization. And I think then the next step was federating. So when you have cooperatives, then you need again the power of collective to federate them. And I think with that, one has been, I think the Seva has been, uh, been a game changer in affecting policy in multiple ways. Whether it's, you know, getting a GR from the Gujarat government or the municipal corporation that without tendering, women's cooperatives will get uh, contracts. So, you know, you are out of self-employed women, poor women's collectives. They're out of the tendering. So, you know, such path breaking work at a systemic level, which, which uh, uh, affects uh, uh, and brings change to at a at a scale i think that is one one lesson that has remained with me and i'm sure with so many so many others thinking ahead today we talk of social media but we had video seva as a cooperative in those times and self employed women whether it was a lena ben the vegetable vendor holding a huge video camera and you know which which in a way, she became a poster lady for Seva at that time. I think to think of media and the power of media to convey your messages, like somebody said that she, she was not after publicity, but, but I think the lesson that again, many like me have learned is that yes, you do have to communicate effectively for, for your cause to be heard. It may not be about yourself, but I think for your cause to be heard, you need to place your communications as, as, with a, as an important place for what you're working for. With self-employed women, we spoke of banking. I think another path breaking work that has been done has been that of social security and social security for the self-employed and childcare and all the supplementary and complementary services that a self-employed woman needs to be able to function at her optimal best 
which sometimes the organized sector takes for granted is i think another model that has been created in her leadership at seva i think the first speaker said that uh, she she moved out but i was at seva at that time when she had said that i will retire when i'm 60 and i want others to take over and i will be there with you and to guide you should you make mistakes i think for a leader to say that i'm allowing you to take over i'm giving you the platform to do your work and to if you if you slip up i'm there to show you the way i think hats off to such a leader and we were fortunate to to have to have worked with a person like her who gave us those platforms to move ahead and i think that was a strategy which has built seva strong institutionally today that there is a strong leadership and she has nurtured that second line for over a long period of time and we are that is why seva will continue to be what it was when when she was at the helm so many years back because she has nurtured the present set of leaders and she has been there for them whenever they needed her but also i would say that it was a non interfering presence she was there when you needed her what was the leadership i think seva seva grew tremendously sometimes i think maybe uh, beyond what anybody's expectations were and i think they were growing up pains uh, which which is natural which is which is natural when an organization grows to scale but what has learned one has learned from a leadership is that she was always accessible we didn't have emails and whatsapp at that time but we had a chitthi system at seva so you know like if you anybody anybody had you know like what we call in terms of our organograms as dotted lines i think she 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 exemplified and she personified the dotted line which went from from top to the bottom and bottom to the top but seva is non hierarchical seva under ila ben was non hierarchical i have been out of the organization and see but seeing it from afar and i'm sure that the character within and the and the culture i'm sure is the same so non hierarchical but anybody could approach her so ben ne chitthi likh mokli so the chitthi has gone to ben and ben will reply so you know that is the confidence that that any each of the seva sisters had and i know till a few days back i have been speaking to a few uh, like uh, when i was last talking to a few seva sisters they said we told ben this we told ben this so that dotted line and that uh, you know the uh, the chitthi system was still functional even in this age of uh, whatsapp and emails and what have you so uh, i think that also is a leader to be so modest so unassuming so accessible which gives you and inspires you that yes she is there for me should i need her so i think that 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 is a huge huge comfort for hundreds and thousands of of uh, people, uh, women who are associated with seva somebody mentioned about uh, ila ben's rickshaw yes sudama bhai and the rickshaw and i think in uh, like uh, within a short span of my joining seva ila ben moved to delhi because she was nominated to the rajya sabha but whenever we would see see the auto parked outside uh, outside seva there would be a spring in everybody's step that ben is in office you know like ben che ben uh, ben aje office ma che because you would see the auto outside there so that itself speaks a lot of the leader that either you are in awe either you are in anxiety that the leader is there or you're happy and there is a spring in your step that knowing that the leader is is available is there and i think that speaks a lot of the lot of the leadership when i last met her it was about 3 years ago when she had visited my brothers and me to condole the death of my father who was her uh, classmate in college my father studied with ramesh bhai and neela ben uh, in surat in college and she had said three of you come i want to tell you all the stories of your father of our college days alas after that uh, there was covid and there are other things and we we have regrets that we never did make the time but there are so many things that uh, 
Ilaben has taught so many like me. And one of it has been, I think one thing that I still have to learn is to remain calm. Unfortunately, I'm not. And also that don't let your face give away what you're thinking. And I think that is a very, very important character that, an, that a leader needs to have, which enables her or him to remain analytical and, and to be able to think calmly and be a decision maker and to be a guide and to give, uh, to, uh, uh, to think with your, think on your feet or whatever else one expects out of leaders. So there are so many, so many lessons. There are so many, so many times that we are in, have been inspired. One thing that comes to mind that we were sitting in a meeting in Seva and somebody said that this has happened uh, with the AMC. Uh, so very calmly, she got up and she said, Chalo jaye. So like, you know, just like that, we got up, we all walked down to the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation and it became what would otherwise be called a morcha. So this is this is the this is what organizing this is what leadership has meant to me, and these lessons will always remember, be with me for my life. And uh, thank you so much, Vibhuti ji, and thank you so much, the hosts, for for giving me this platform to to be able to share my uh, I think my foundation of the sector uh, and the lessons that uh, will always remain with me for my life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nisleen Ben, for bringing out the whole insider story of the functioning of SEVA, the democratic and non-hierarchical functioning, and also Ila Ben as a strategist. I think it's very important to understand that how the organization, which is now more than 17 million members, and we started as a SEVA Ahmedabad, and then became SEVA Gujarat, and SEVA Bharat, and SEVA Asia, and even ILO has recognized it as a most powerful trade union. Uh, and I think this whole trajectory you have provided so beautifully. Uh, now I ask Dr. Dr. Sandeep Chatra, who is a, who has also worked as a member of Action Aid and as a decision maker of Action Aid with Ilaben in different capacities. So over to Dr. Sandeep Chatra. First of all, on this Somba occasion, thank you, Dr. Vibhuti Patel, for hosting this for convening this and also to Impri colleagues, Dr. Arjun, Dr. Simi and others for actually making this space happen. Uh, this is a very important space uh, because Ila Ben, despite her passage, is an inspiration to many, many in the world. Let me begin there. She is not just a personal inspiration to a man called Sandeep here, who's on your screens, but uh, she serves as an inspiration to wherever I go, to the women workers when I meet them, they cite Seva, they cite the example of Seva to the struggles of fisher women, to the struggles of street vendor women, to the struggles of, as Dr. Nisreen was pointing out just now, to the struggles of those women who, majority of them who are engaged in manual scavenging, wherever you go, I can go on and on. And this is not only limited to India. Although I am now working with ActionAid India for the last several years, uh, much before this job, I was part of work globally in Africa, in Latin America, and also in other parts of Asia. And wherever you go, there will be seldom be anybody in the labor sphere or in the women workers sphere, in the cooperative sphere. So endless spheres in the economic sphere, as Dr. Nisreen was speaking about, the possibilities of what economies can do for people, pro people, pro poor, pro people economics. Wherever you go, Ila Ben and Seva conjointly or separately would always be an inspiration from wherever people were coming from, despite all the language barriers, despite all the barriers of not having, you know, these days much more information is available on the internet. But I'm talking of times in, in late 90s, early 2000s when such information was not available, but there was seldom be anybody who would not know Ila Ben and the work of Seva globally. Banking, finance, uh, the question on the power of cooperatives, the question of women workers, the question of feminist solidarity, the advances on social security. So you can keep naming and you can keep going on and on and the list never ends. 
I humbly I want to submit that I never had this golden opportunity to be unlike our previous esteemed speaker, Nisrinji. I never had this fortune uh, to have that close mentoring. I, I will always regret it. I never had that fortune. Uh, I, but I did have the fortune of being mentored in part by very close friends of Ila Ben, of Devki Jainji, uh, who, who guided me and keeps guiding me. And of course, uh, our late and first chair of Action Aid Association, the late Lakshmi Chan Jainji. Uh, they were close friends. So I had the good fortune in another way to be mentored by deep associates, solidarity associates, historical associates in this struggle, particularly Gandhian economics, uh, which uh, LCJNG represented, and particularly the leadership Dr. LCJN represented. And under that, I had occasions to meet Ila Ben a number of times. The most remarkable memory, if, if you can call memories are like pictures, photographs, the most remarkable memory I have is of being invited uh, together with Devki Jainji and myself and other colleagues to be guests at the time when Ila Ben was receiving the Indira Gandhi Peace Prize uh, at, at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And needless to say, that was the only occasion where when I have been uh, invited or even gone to Rashtrapati Bhavan, a very beautiful location. And I still remember the humility, the, the, the breadth of knowledge and the simplicity and the accessibility of Ila Ben at that function. She was at the center stage and people like us meant nobody to her, right? Uh, but it was Ila Ben who, who stood tall there despite her not so tall stature she, in terms of physical stature. She was the one who stood tall uh, among all other dignitaries, at least from uh, the vantage point of where I sat. Uh, a person who could inspire not just the women workers of Seva who could inspire those people who are not really connected with her. So I, I think that's what, what I want to submit in memoriam to Ila Ben. And let me say two or three other things. Of course, much has been spoken about the millions of members of Seva. Much has been spoken about the progression she did on social security front, on economic, on unleashing the economic power of women, on unleashing the confidence of women. But three or four inspirations is what we have taken for ourselves for all, for all these years. And I think I, I want, I owe as part of my organization, as an individual, as, an, as a person working in the arena of social development, I owe an endless debt of gratitude uh, to Ila Ben and to the work of Seva. And let me point those three or four, uh, which continue daily, on a daily basis to inspire our work. And I am sure inspire a lot of other social organizations, unions, formations. Anyway, the first of this is the question, what I said, putting the at the center stage of our paradigm, of our development paradigm, of our progress, social progress paradigm, the issue of women in work and women workers, and particularly in the context of India, where majority of women are in the informal sector, the women informal sector workers. Under the context of falling work participation rates, uh, growing informalization of work, this becomes of crucial importance. So that is what we, for instance, from Action Aid Association, took as a central construct of our support to others, but also of our direct work on the ground, organizing, if not unionizing fully, cooperativizing, federalizing, forming, forming groups of informal worker women, for example, domestic workers, whether in Bengal or elsewhere, for example, fish worker women, for example, street vendor women. So that we took at the core of our work and efforts, a continued efforts as we unravel uh, from the inspirations of Eleven. Remember, and I want to say something else, remember, and I want to remind us all that where there are many resolutionaries, but Eleven was one among the few I hope there are more and more Ila Bens in the world, one among the few who move from resolution to quiet res uh, revolutions on the ground. So Ila Ben, without parading as a revolutionary, to me, was a real revolutionary on the ground. So how to move from, from resolutions to revolutions is somebody wants to study that topic which ails a lot of social organizations where we pass resolutions here and there and nothing really happens on the ground. I think for us on the ground, Ila Ben stands tall in the revolutionary, in the quiet revolutionary that she was. The second of those inspirations, which I think we all must take, 
is this whole issue of challenging patriarchy in action, not just challenging patriarchy in the sphere of the home, but challenging patriarchy in every sphere of life. Uh, and and seva and seva the tall leaders that seva women workers are are challenging patriarchy on a daily basis in their spheres of work in their half spheres of work in their domestic spheres and in the in the sphere of world politics so i, I think that's a that's a very very big inspiration for us in 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 our in our social organization and i see numerous other social organizations be inspired with that the question of how do you break the barriers of unequal work? How do you break the, uh, the, the barriers that women are confined to? Not just unequal wages, but unequal recognition. Uh, the, 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 fact of, uh, the fact of space and decision making, the, the fact of autonomy, the fact of leadership. And I think that, that message that Ila Ben and Seva passed uh, to all of us can, is an abiding, abiding message for our society. Uh, for, and for I think all societies, be it in the global south or be it in the global north, and I think there, there is something that I also want to add. Uh, what has been spoken about, so I'll not dwell on it too much. I was listening to a few of the other speakers. The the power of what is called solidarity economics in a time at a time when capital is commodifying, when capital is pushing labor down and down not just in the share of the capital profits, but also in, in share of value chains. At that point in time, uh, and I think the world is recognizing this more and more. I think this narrative has entered uh, global policy making, national policy making, and that's really the contribution of Ila Ben. Uh, they, at, at such a time, what is needed is a tremendous decentralized response of the power of women. And in doing cooperativization, you know, the word is very simple. It sounds like we're coming from history. It's not. It's actually unleashing the power of feminist solidarity in action through this instrument called cooperatives. Needless to say, there are many challenges. Needless to say, today, we have to encounter the challenge of something what's called the producer organizations, which, which are essentially a market uh, kind of a situation. And, and one, can, one can discuss it elsewhere. But I think Ila Ben told us how to do it practically, not just practically, how to do it theoretically, and how to sort of push policy making uh, such that uh, th that efforts gets more and more recognized. Uh, many of the state missions which, which we celebrate today, remember the Social Security Act of 2008, you know, much changes have happened. We still have a Social Security Code. I wish Ila Ben were with us. And I wish she was, she, was, she was there at the front leading this struggle where we don't really, really know what social security is uh, despite all the ishram registrations. But the fact remains, uh, the original informal worker social security act, I would humbly submit, was a contribution of Ila Ben in derivation. Similarly, this, this I, I was talking of this, uh, you, uh, mention was made of street vendors. I think the current PM Vikas Nidhi for street vendors essentially derives from the work of Seva. I don't, I don't know if it acknowledges it formally, but that's where it derives from the Swanidhi, Swanidhi uh, program, for example. And I think the, the whole Street Vendors Act is also in part an inspiration of Seva and several other formations who are fighting these. So Ila Ben leaves a huge legacy, a huge legacy of of, of work on the ground, revolutionary work on the ground, uh, which at this point in time in history has, has more progressions to make. And I think that's the continued uh, direction and, and, and inspiration that we have for all of us. Because the headwinds of the world, the headwinds today facing us, are, are, are really not the tailwinds in that direction. So whether it's climate change, so whether, whether it's the resource concentration in the hands of a few, whether it's the kind of industrial model that we are getting into, all these construe the next generation challenges, which I think would do well, very well, to gain inspiration and politics from the essence of what Ila Ben stood for. Uh, that is my humble tribute to the, to, to the great soul Ila Ben was, to the great inspiration she gave to me 
and to many others like me of a different generation, of a different geography, who never, unfortunately, had the possibility to be mentored by her. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep Ji, for a very, very erudite presentation and bringing the question of neoliberalism and solidarity economy and also the feminist solidarity importance of that and how Ila Bain stood tall in the midst of all such adverse onslaught that we are that we, have, we are experiencing after India adopted new economic policy and how the whole journey from resolution to revolution, I think I liked it very much that we all need to, because we are coming up with thousands of resolutions, but it doesn't result into revolution by, by which Ila Ben did, whatever she preached and what she was, once she was convinced about the approach, she always saw to it that she had a successful uh, and it was a result-oriented approach. Thank you very much. Now, I would request Mr. Martin McQuan, who is from Ahmedabad, who has worked with Ilaban in different capacities, and who is also a very important grassroots uh, uh, worker, and, as well as a public intellectual. Over to Martin Bhai. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vibhuti Patel, uh, for inviting me. Uh, I was born in 1959, the same age where uh, Ila Ben San Mihir uh, was born. Uh, so she was like a mother to me. And, uh, <clears throat> but I think uh, from whatever interaction I have had with her is that her simplicity was her power. She was a very, very simple person. And uh, she took positions. She was a Gandhian, but that she was not a Gandhi Bhakt. Mm -hmm. And when Gansham Shah was uh, doing this book, revisiting Hind Swaraj, and uh, she was also one of the contributors where I too was one. And she said, you know, she did a critique of Gandhi that, you know, Bapu has forgotten women in, her, in his uh, entire writing. Mm -hmm. So she could, uh, in her simple way, with a smile, uh, offer the biggest criticism. I, you know, as a child, uh, I can remember that there were two persons before I met Ilabin. My mother was a tobacco worker, and uh, I grew into that area, which is called Cherotar in Khada district, the richest area of Gujarat. And there was a person called Mr. Zaveri, Andy Zaveri, who had tried to organize the tobacco workers. He was personally attacked. He was thrown acid on his face. He was burned badly. He used to visit my house again and again. Uh, his wife and my mother were, were co-workers. Hmm? There was another person called Mr. Joseph McMahon, one of the very profound uh, writer. <clears throat> and he had done a series of uh, essays on the exploitation that the tobacco women workers uh, face. And uh, it is these writings that became the basis for Seva to organize the tobacco workers in a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ila Bet cared for, I think, you know, if I uh, remember correctly, the three categories of women which nobody ever spoke about. Tobacco workers, the vendors, and the scavenger women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Sharama Shakti report also mentions about the living conditions of these scavenger women. Mm -hmm. So, these are the women uh, nobody spoke about. And I think way back in 72, it was a revolutionary idea to organize women. Right. And uh, of course, with the demise of eleven, there were there were there was a beeline, including the uh, highest uh, office bearers of India, offering condolences, but they were not friendly with Seva. They were not appreciative with the work that Seva did. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, you know, uh, I would maybe two more points and uh, very few people took a position during the 1981 riots. I think you mentioned in your first remark that both Ramesh Bhai and uh, Ilaben took a position and their house was attacked. You know, they were stoned. Mm -hmm. 
when my house was set on fire during the anti-Christian riots in Gujarat, she was the first person and the only person who wrote me a personal letter mm, with her own handwriting uh, saying these things happen and don't worry. Mm. So she, as a person, she, she kept eye on everything. She took care of uh, you as a person. Lastly, you know, uh, we all speak about the Gujarat model nowadays, you know, Ilaben, without speaking much, mm, she showed to the world, the other side of Gujarat, what the, the marginalized and the exploited workforce face. Mm, and they're not definitely not part of the Gujarat model. Mm. Without a clear political articulation, mm, she organized women across caste and religion. And that I think was her biggest uh, strength. Mm. We can say, we can go on. Uh, a lot of people have started microcredit, uh, you know, activities, but very few models with uh, such a high rate of repayments, mm -hmm. because the strength comes from the commitment of the women to the ideology, mm -hmm. and which she was able to uh, inculcate uh, among the masses. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I would just stop there. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you again for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. Bhai. I think your experience also of uh, the riots, uh, IT1 riots, and even uh, mine was a bit earlier in 1969, when newly formed Dalit uh, Panther organizations, youth invited me because I come from Charotar's party, Dar community, because had they helped the Muslim uh, refugees, they would have fetched backlash so i was invited in ahmedabad and they told me that this is the only one lady from tla who is standing by these women headed households mostly the in those middle class colonies as well as working class colonies there were only women elderly and children and eleven not only did relief work but she also showed them the way of rebuilding their devastated life no so i think yeah very very important dimension of ilaben you have brought in now i request parul ben parul ben uh, who works with the for abolition of child labor in a very difficult area of alan breaking ship breaking yard i invite her to pay her tribute to ilaben parul ben shait she is in the participants lead dr arjun kumar please give her access Yes, ma'am, we have given, but she's her name is in among participants, not among the panelists. Yeah. Huh, yes. She has joined. Parul Bain, are you there? Please unmute yourself. Hello. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, Parul Bain. Yes, please okay, go ahead. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Yes, thank you for giving me the access and thank you so much for inviting me on this panel. Yeah, Vibhuti you can also show, switch on your video so that we can see you. Yeah. Yes, but uh, I... Okay, please go ahead. Can you uh, just... Can you see? No, we can't see you. But it's go ahead, please go ahead. We can clearly hear you. I think now maybe you can see me. Yes, I'm we can not sure. see you also. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. We can see. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. So uh, I really appreciate for inviting me on this panel. Uh, Ila Ben is my role model in this sector. Uh, whatever I am today, whatever uh, uh, I have been able to do is that I always look at, look up to her whenever I have any question. My, I just want to share my story as a child. I remember I was in ninth grade and first time I learned economics as a subject. And there was a lesson where it was mentioned that, you know, women's work, beggar's work and the thief's work have no value. And I was so stunned and shocked to read that line. And I asked my teacher that I can understand about a beggar or a thief but how can women's work be have no value and it is at the at the par and the same level like beggar or a thief? 
and teachers say that's that's the role okay that's economics you don't ask question and i didn't know i was as a child i was totally uh, like i i didn't know what to say but i didn't have question but i you know after decades when i understood this dynamics and the patriarchy and everything about it i realized the importance of the contribution that eleven has made by recognizing the women's work especially the how like you know homemaker she, she gave that such a respectful world and for the first time uh, in the census the women's work was recognized uh, and that is something that you know i say that you know like how what the power of or a woman power that can change the whole theory uh so that was something that really uh, admire that is uh then it was like uh, my I, my uh, direct association was not with her for a long time even though i visited seva and i learned about the work and i read her books it was not direct association but uh, when we were in 2003 when we were Uh, planning to launch our first children collective of gujarat uh, we wanted her to come and wear seva with uh, millions of people women on the union and we were like about such a grass small grassroots organization having about 2 300 children uh, on the collective so it was like uh, but like you know we like children we were stubborn and we said ila ben you have to come and she said no you know we i don't have time i can't go and all that i said you went to un to sign un crc on our behalf and now we are implementing that un crc you are the one who organized so many women and for the first time we are making attempts to organize children and you have to come and you have to give your blessings to us and you know she listened to us i remember it was like we i was not even 40 at that time and she listened to young people like us and she said okay i will come and she came and she stayed with us and she i still remember what she said she said if you want to bring social change sustainable social change we'll have to work with women and children and i'm so happy that i've been able to do uh, work with women but i have regret that i've not been able to do as much as i wish with children but i'm so glad that you all are doing it ha uh, young people like you are doing this so it was so nice to you know hear that and that gives us so much of power especially because she was very happy that we were able to bring children from very diverse background together so that was i think very special uh, that uh, we were able to uh, uh, you know she could appreciate it and uh, because of that whenever we had any doubts or when we would turn to her and ask her and she was always since then always you know available to us accessible we whenever we had any questions i remember you know like uh, if there are any frustrating experience when i see at a global level larger level national level i would call her and say lila ben what is happening you know what to do and she would listen to me and she would give some words of wisdom i i am that gives me lot of strength and come out of the depression of like you know why is it happening like this so i think the kind of connection that she could make to individually to you know small organization and grassroots people like us so it was and so nicely so simple and humble i remember what martin bai say uh also like uh, uh, i remember that uh, uh, when we, there was this march from uh, from gujarat vidyapeeth to sabarmati and it was like a afternoon a hot afternoon and all including me said sila ben you can sit in the auto car don't walk in this no no i have to walk and she walked all the way and that gives us so much like you know Uh, motivation so much uh, like leadership 
the role model as a leader what one has to do that is something and i remember that when we started our new work in narmada district and it was started and led by the children who were part of palsena so i took them and i said gijila ben see your blessing because of that we this balsena girls are now going to lead the project and she listened to them quietly okay what are your dreams what do you want to do and like these girls who are 22 year 23 year old she listened to her quietly nicely and the first thing that when we stepped out of the house those girls said first time we are meeting someone who is so big but who is listening to us rather than giving us advice of doing this and that so you know like so much patience that she had she was not only i mean people always remember as a her as a woman uh, like you know for as a feminist and for women empowerment but she has done so much of work even for children she was on the she was our patron and a uh, national advisor for campaign against child labor and she was also like uh, given uh, look on a jury for public hearing related child labor for girl child labor and so many so she is not only for uh, i mean of course of uh, women power there is no way but what i want to uh, emphasize is that there are lot of uh, other areas that she is covered and the excellent documentation like you know all the books that she has written so uh, impactful because it came directly from her experiences be it anuband or uh, you know and lari youth which is not so famous but it is a best docu never a docu novel kind of a document which can be i use it a lot to do a training on collective it's such a powerful piece so like you know she is she encompasses to so multiple uh, you know arena that i i feel so much vacuum that whenever i had any problem i used to think that okay i will check with ila ben what to do you know she will guide me and i will i can blindly kind of follow her but i feel so much vacuum now i don't know who, who will i go and ask this eleven this is a question i have and who do i go so i feel really very very it's she is like a role model like a mother figure and i don't know how can i ever uh, that this vacuum can be filled uh, that she, she that you know i miss her so much but uh, through her work and through her life you know what gandhi ji mentioned is that my life is my message same is applicable to ilaben her life is a message uh, and that is what is her power you know what what her simplicity her beautiful smile you know she could not participate in our 25 year silver jubilee program but she wrote a very beautiful letter on her with her own handwriting that is a treasure for us you know she these are the simple beautiful things that she a gesture that has uh, like you know that has created a big space in our heart that and what learning that we get from her experiences is so much powerful that is going to lead our way so i mean uh, i don't know her loss in the sector is irreplaceable and i don't know whether when we can ever have any other eleven but uh, what she has done is so much path breaking that uh, i mean i really i'm struggling to find the right word for it but uh, eleven we will so much miss you i mean you are so great thank you parul ben for such a beautiful tribute and highlighting two uh, less uh, visible areas of ila ben's contribution especially her writings and here i would like to mention the, how she started ansuya a, a newsletter of seva which has been continued for past 50 years and this is the silver golden jubilee year of seva and uh, the so many vignettes and uh, stories are there in in this year's uh, every month the issue that comes out both in hindi as well as in gujarati and she named it in uh, uh, in honor of her mentor ansuya ben sarabhai 
Now, our last speaker today is Dr. Ar uh, Roshan Ara. Unfortunately, there is no electricity or network in Meghalaya. So both Dr. Hashina Karabi as well as Rama Ramaswamy, who work with the women's market, you must be knowing that Meghalaya is no very important uh, role that women self-employed workers are playing. We, 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 we will we will miss their sharing. But Roshanara, who is equally important work that she has been doing, both in the area of women's studies and women's enter enterprise development of the women handicraft workers in Kashmir, will share her experiences. Over to Dr. Roshanara. Thank you so lot, madam for inviting me to the session. A very good evening to one and all. It is indeed my proud privilege and honor to be a part of this session, which has been organized in the honor of late Ila Ben, our beloved leader, uh, a visionary figure, and to remember her and pay homage to the departed soul. I pray to Almighty Allah that may her soul rest in peace. I would like to uh, compile uh, the overall her contribution in one uh, few stanzas of the famous poetry of Dr. Alama Iqbal. Bohot saalu se nargis apni bezari pe roti hai. Bohot saalu se nargis apni bezari pe roti hai. Badi mushkil se hota hai. Chaman mein didavar paida. I will translate it. It means that Nargis, a famous plover, has been weeping along for her helplessness. And she is also waiting that it would still take a long time, centuries together, that a person, a visionary, uh, will just take birth in this garden again that will give me the uh, that will give me a helping hand or extend her help to me. I think this is a clear message that sums up the contribution of uh, Ila Ben. When we look upon uh, the contribution and the work, first of all, uh, let us go through her early life. Ila Ben was born on September 1933 at Ahmedabad, Gujarat. She did her schooling from Surat, Gujarat. And since she was uh, a resident of um, uh, Surat, and uh, this city was the city of textile industry. And uh, the uh, plight of the informal workers, the workers of this industry, uh, that was quite obvious to her. And she was observing the, uh, the situation, the overall daily struggle of these workers. And this attracted her attention from even her school days. Eleven graduated from the University of Gujarat. She did her law. and. She, uh, the very important component of her life that has motivated her, that has influenced her, is that she, she belonged to the family of freedom fighters. Her grandfather had walked shoulder to shoulder in Dandi Marish with Gandhiji, and she was highly influenced and motivated by the ideology of Gandhi. She imbibed, she adopted the Gandhian model. She was Gandhian at heart and Gandhian in her work. And she proved her throughout all her life. Ilabin, uh, after- uh, Roshanji, uh, can you uh, see how your work, can, can you just tell about your work and how it got inspired? Yes, yes. What connect did it have yes. with Ilabin's work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, am, I am coming to that. Should I, should I uh, just close my video? I will be no. quick. No, it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, ma'am. I will be coming to our work. And uh, you know, when we talk about the economic empowerment model models uh, throughout the world, we find uh, Ila, uh, what she means to Indian women, and she, what she means the same for the whole world. And I can compare Ila to Professor Mohammed Yunus from Bangladesh, a famous economist of uh, this Asian continent who followed the model, who adopted the model for my, a model of microfinance for the women who were uh, marginalized and the poor. Ila formed, Ila Ben formed Seva in 1972 and became its general secretary. She served as general secretary of Seva till 1996. Inspired by 
Gandhi Gandhi ji and she formed she uh, to organize this women workers and we see that uh, her contribution and her leadership under her dynamic leadership this seva could uh, expand up to millions of workers and today we see that it has a membership of 17 million members ila ben uh, served not only as a social worker but equally she has been a wife she has been a mother she has been a grandmother a mother in law and what what is what goes to her credit and what motivates us to do the same she has been a political leader as well she has been an intellectual as well and she has received many honorary doctorates from many universities like university of yale university of harvard university of natal etc and other academic institutions in the honor of her great contribution and selfless service she has served as a member of she has been uh, honored uh, many awards she has been awarded roshan ji uh, please uh, speak uh, about your work no what okay. what you have been doing in kashmir yes uh, yes similar yes. work because we yes, don't have much time you have two yeah. minutes to yeah okay okay yeah. basically you know uh, when I, i i actually i want to say that uh, if we talk about a leader like her i i wish that the same model can be adopted in kashmir for the marginalized women you know i often see women who are working uh, in the informal sector uh, in uh, like other parts of the country as well we see that there is a large chunk of women workers who are working in, in the informal sector and you know there have been there have been uh, many instances when i see when i find women protesting on the roads for this thing uh, whether they are the uh, uh, women from this uh, they are asha workers or they are the women from uh, this uh, icds or they are the women from other this domestic sector but every time i see that we need to form a collective platform like this so that their voice voice can be heard and we can address and redress their issues when we see women who are working in kashmir especially women entrepreneurs they are facing the constraints like other women of the country and our women the biggest constraint of this uh, women folk for, from the informal sector you know they are they are, they are um, handicapped at many stages at many instances i can quote for example the if they produce the product they are not getting the market if they have to travel to other parts of the country uh, you know they are not getting uh, such such a social sanction uh, that you are allowed to travel free or you can go alone because they have to travel uh, in the train they have to travel uh, um, by road and it becomes a hindrance for them again you know when uh, our self employed women they uh, usually they are caught up in few uh, uh, these uh, areas of production only like uh, they are doing the handicraft they are doing uh, this bag work they are doing this uh, masala they are doing other things but i wish and i i am hopeful that we will succeed in this mission that i could do and we could do together that our women uh, who are uh, energetic who are now coming forward they are they are uh, professionally trained women and uh, i think and i am hopeful that they can be connected to their first to the women of this uh, uh, country uh, seva and then to the outside world and uh, women entrepreneurs i we know that they cannot only they, are, they cannot only make themselves independent but they can contribute and they are contributing to the economy of the nation as well and i am hopeful that uh, uh, since uh, we don't have uh, any ilabin in kashmir but i am hopeful that today remembering her and paying her rich tribute will be that we should follow the, her footsteps and her message and her work her contribution will be reflected uh, in our work as well and following her footsteps will sure uh, help us to overcome the constraints that we continuously face and i i hope that this platform will also uh, be our support um, extend their helping hand to the women of kashmir and we know that uh, universities or the academic institutions and the training centers they all need to come together to form such a group like seva 
so in and doing a real seva in the real sense for the upliftment of women uh, especially from the marginalized section of the society thank you and, dr rashinara okay, yeah okay, now we okay. have jyoti mapsekar uh, who has developed a very equally important project in Gujarat, in Mumbai, Parisar Vikas. And she also was closely associated with, in fact, the Parisar Vikas project was inaugurated by Ilabe. Jyoti, can you unmute yourself and speak? Jyoti, ha, please, please switch on your video. Yeah. I wish you could have been, <laughs> yeah, she should have been on this panel also. Jyoti, please go ahead. Hello. Are you there? Jyoti, please unmute yourself. Jyoti Mapsekar, are you there? Hello? Uh, she's not active, ma'am. Okay, okay. So can we can I conclude now? Yes, ma'am. We have one hand raised by Tara Sinaji. Okay, okay. Yeah. So please, please. Tara ji, if you want to add anything. Tara Sinaji. Okay. Yes, please go ahead, Taraji. I think it's not working. Is Ma'am, it by please. mistake? I think the hand is raised. Should I conclude? Yes, yes, ma'am. One one humble request, ma'am. Yeah. One humble request. I would like to uh, just add and uh, have your attention towards this issue that it is not uh, today also when more and more women are joining the workforce. And you know, um, today, even in this modern era, we see that not women in the informal sector are suffering, but still the women in the formal sector are also equally suffering. There is lack of unionization and forming of your women's unions is still being seen, uh, farming of women as unions is still seen as a sham or uncommon or irrelevant. Yeah. And I think I would like to have the attention of the panelists as well that what can be done. Still, women are suffering. Organizing, yeah. Yes, yeah. very important. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. For that, yeah, the gender responsiveness of the mainstream unions is also equally important issue. And now I would like to conclude. I think we we had a very very. Uh, very, very important issues that came up and sharing by our panelists and parties. Uh, they have made this day full of nostalgia about Ilaben's unique contribution. The major highlights of the tribute has shown that Ilaben was a secular humanist who stood by Dalit Adivasi's religious minorities. She made path-breaking contribution by formation of self-employed uh, women's association as a women's trade union, friends of women's uh, 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 rights, and women's studies movement. And she was also a heart and soul of Shamshakti report. Under her leadership, Seva played pivotal role in enactment of several labor legislations. And also uh, in 2007, when Ilaben joined the group of elders, uh, Dr. Nelson Mandela, uh, Graka Machel, Desmond Tutu, Dr. Desmond Tutu, uh, she also took up the issue of child rights, especially fight against child labor and child marriages. And she also led the delegation to Bihar, I think the first doctor her first speaker shared that experience of going to Bihar and accompanying her. So what we see is that, and as a chancellor of Gujarat Vidya Peet Ahmedabad, during 2015 to 2022, Ilaben firmly adhered to Gandhian principles of non-sectarian and pluralist approach in governance. And uh, Ilaben, as a true Gandhian, followed the principles of simplicity, dignity of sweat labor, decentralization, economic self-sufficiency, cooperation, equality, non-violence, peacemaking, peacekeeping, peace building, and actions guided by human values of ethics and justice, social solidarity and empowerment of village production units and sustainable future by living in harmony with nature. She considered poverty and hunger as a structural and systemic violence. Her, her inspiring values and beliefs uh, conveyed in this, this statement, and I quote Ilaben, let diversity be maintained, grown, and flourished. Uh, think uh, uh, correlatedly, creatively, 
and respond with empathy and social solidarity when you are faced with challenges in life. Ila Bain is a product of women's freedom movement and uh, she uh, also anytime she faced difficulty, she remembered Ekla Chalore by Rabindranath Tagore and uh, she also was never uh, deterred, like she, she never got unnerved whenever she faced violent attacks on her or a verbal attacks on her. Uh, seva cooperatives and by launching seva cooperatives and seva insurance program uh, she consulted always she consulted seva members any new project she, that was launched by seva currently seva bharat has 21 lakh members in 18 states of india and the luminaries such as renana jhabwala mirai chatterjee who dedicated their whole life to the mission of seva and ilaben's dream of empowerment of unorganized and informal sector workers ilo has also recognized I seva as a trade union during the lockdown in 2021 it was such a moral boost to find on a zoom platform of citizens forum uh, 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 conducted by Bharti Sinha Sahai of Ahmedabad when I made presentation on gender responsive budget uh, Ila Band was present from the very beginning till the end and even after the recording stopped she gave me so many uh, encouraging Ad, uh, guidance and also uh, uh, admired the work that feminist economists have been doing. Uh, we wanted Ila Ben to address the Indian Association of Women's Studies coming conference, uh, but now we, we uh, now we'll have to satisfy ourselves with her inspiring memories as we related uh, recollected today. Dear Ilaben, we promise to continue your legacy of making dedicated efforts of social security, social protection, and unorganized sector workers, and will amplify their voices. Our heartfelt condolences to Ilaben's daughter, Amya Ben, and son, Mihirbai, and the family members, her colleagues, and millions of members of SEVA. I would like to end this in memoria with beautiful verses of Mariana Williamson that was often recited by Dr. Nelson Mandela. And this is the most appropriate verses that we can think of about Ila Ben. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be so brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine. As children too, we are born to make manifest the glory of God within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we li are liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Dear Ilaben, your presence had a liberating influence over all those whose lives you touch. Rest in power, Ilaben. We promise to follow in your footsteps wherever we are, whichever location we are. Thank you very much. Uh, to all the participants who have stayed on for this two hour long memorial meeting of Ilaben. Over to Impre team, Anjali. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, uh, participants. As we come to the end of the condolence meeting in memoriam remembering Ila Bhar, a pioneer in amplifying the voices of women engaged in self-employed and the unorganized sector, I, Anshul, researcher at IMPRI, would like to formally uh, propose a vote of thanks on behalf of the IMPRI Gender Impact Studies Center and IMPRI Impact and Policy Research Institute, New Delhi. We would like to express our gratitude to Professor Vibhuti Patel for chairing today's session and our panelists, doc, uh, Dr. Hasina Kharbi, Ms. Nisreen Ibrahim, Mr. Martin McFin, Professor Ghansham Shah, Dr. Rama Ramaswamy, Ms. Parul Sheth, Dr. Roshan Ara, Doc, Mr. Sandeep Chachra, Dr. Sanjay Kumar, and Ms. Amarjeet Kaur for taking out their precious time and enlightening this celebration. 
and of course we thank our audience here on zoom or on facebook live for attending and participating in the session we are grateful if you are watching us later on youtube or listening our podcast or reading our publications i hope that you continue to tune in future to our employee web policy talk thank you once again and i wish you all a very good evening